Good morning, folks. This is Jacob Folger, artist and sculptor, and today we're going to do a couple different things. We're going to, uh, first of all, we'll be working with this uh, ready-cut watercolor paper uh, that I got, uh, 8 by 10 inches, um, 140 pounds. Uh, just a uh, economical uh, watercolor color paper. Um, I've used it a few times and I like it, so we'll go ahead and use that. I've got a sheet ready to go here. And um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use this. Um, I've used it and I love it. It's beautiful stuff. Uh, it's called Glass Bead Gel. It's made by Golden, but I'm sure you can get it in other places. Um, and uh, what it is, it's clear acrylic gel with small glass beads in it. So it's, it's basically texture um, that you can add to your paintings um, before or after. Um, and so I just give you an idea about that. Um, I did this painting here. Um, without texture and then added added the texture later with the glass beads so because it dries clear and it's really quite beautiful um so um we'll go ahead and do that so i'm going to show you how i do it so I'll open it up this is what it looks like inside and i'm going to get some on my palette knife and just apply it to the paper and uh, if you, you know, if you just don't know yet at this point what you're going to do uh, with your painting, you can just apply it any old way. Um, I do have some idea. I'm thinking of doing a forest scene, maybe, uh, with some trees. Um, and I'm not really sure what else, but that's kind of what I have on my mind. So with that in mind, um, I'm first thing I'm going to do is just spread it around. And then uh, I'm thinking, I'm just visualizing for myself. Um, I'm going to want some kind of forest scene here, so uh, maybe like, kind of like that painting I just showed you with uh, trees coming down, um, like down the hill, uh, like that, because um, that, was, that was really pretty the last time when I did that painting, I love that. So I'm kind of creating texture along those lines by visualizing what I want to paint in the future. You don't have to do that. You can texture it any way you want. Um, you can do this or that. You can draw lines in it. I mean, you can whatever feels good. Um, now, they do say in the instructions not to put it on too thick, but it will, it will dry. I did experience that for myself. So then here, right in this area, right here in my, as I visualize my painting coming up, I don't want a lot of texture. I want that to be fairly clean because I'm going to make that a little water area where maybe a moon will be reflecting. So I want that to be fairly smooth. So that's what I've got so far. We'll have to wait for this to dry. It'll probably take about an hour. And then we'll come back and do a painting. Okay, so we're coming back now. Um, I've done the texture on this. Uh, it's mostly dry. <clears throat> Some of the places where it's thicker right here and here. It's a, it's a little soft, but it's okay, I think, for me to continue. So what I'm going to do is working with Utrecht Studio Series Acrylic in deep black. I'm going to paint this black. And so, I'm just going to put my paint right on the watercolor paper. And using a palette knife, I'm going to spread it around. 
which also adds texture to the painting, um, of course, by applying it with a palette knife. I'm going to need more paint here. Let me uh, get some more. All right, there we go. That'll give us enough, I'm sure. Put my tap back on. Just want to make sure I cover the whole canvas or the whole piece of watercolor paper. And so remember the the uh, mostly of the uh, texture was done. The heavy part was done here. So I can add to that by maybe doing this, and then keeping in mind that this is where I want my water. I want that to be fairly smooth. And then up here, I guess it doesn't matter a whole lot. So I'll just kind of do a random um, little bit of work on that. So, um, so now we'll let this dry and we'll come back and hopefully start our painting. Okay, so we're Getting closer to ready to starting. I've got the texture, as you can see. You can see the texture here. I'm trying to get an angle so you can see it good. And then I painted it black. And that's dry. Everything's dry. And that's what it looks like. So now we're going to go ahead and start painting. So, what I'm going to show you something is. I, sometimes I use paper plates, but really I prefer to use uh, uh, watercolor paper for my palettes. And part of the reason why is because when I mix paint and use it in my paintings, um, <clears throat> I can save that as a reference and I can make notes about it, you know, I can write something about it. Um, I had actually uh, made the mistake of using this lid here for a palette. This is a paste wax, Johnson paste wax lid. And this beautiful little color in here, that little green, uh, blue color I used yesterday. And uh, and I, I saw that this morning and I said, oh my god, I've got to, you know, try to recreate that. So had I made notes and all that and kept it on something that I could keep and be sure to later, um, I would have been better off. But luckily I remembered. So the colors that I'm using here are um, Utrecht Studio Series Acrylic, uh, Ultra Marine Blue, and the same kind of paint in Bright Aqua Green. I put a little bit on the palette and I've got a palette knife here and what I did was I took a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the green and you see just by just barely doing much of anything I have come very close to mixing this color that was on here um, so, so I want to show you that. I also want to tell you that when you mix paint, you don't have to like mix it all up and get it all one color. You can mix it where it's like that, that with it, its models. And, and actually, I find this a lot more beautiful than that or that. I mean, this is very pretty and I like that. So, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, try to use this here in my painting. And I'm going to start by creating kind of a forest here. So I'm going to get uh, a little bit of my paint and uh, just start applying it to the canvas. And, um, you know, I can use different colors. Um, sometimes what I do is I'll use uh, one color uh, and do that and then come back and do another color. And so I think that might be the best thing. So I'm going to get some colors on here on my palette that I'll be using. Um, can you see that? Okay. So, and I don't just want that those colors I mixed. I want a mixture of colors um, that I can apply. And I'll show you that, how I do that. So, I've got Paleo Blue. I've got Ultramarine Blue. I've got Bright Aqua Green. And let's see what else we have here. Um, I want bright white. Put that right on the palette. And so those will be the main colors I'll be using right now. So, let's continue here. So I'm going to do a, a little bit of um, the uh, bright aqua green. And I'm just, I'm just dabbing, you can see how I'm applying it. I'm applying it with the palette knife, but just kind of dabbing it. And uh, I'll get some of this blue, put it on there, and just layer the colors, basically. And going over the black, it's just really quite beautiful. And a little bit of white too. It's nice to add a little bit of contrast and um, more color, of course. Going. Doing a little bit here and there, maybe a little bit more blue. And of course, you can, if you like, um, clean your palette knife off on a rag. I oftentimes use my pants because, of, you know, I just I'm a painter and I have paint on me and all the time, pretty much. So I just use my pants or a paper towel, whatever. Now, I do want to maybe come up a little bit just to have a few tall trees. Uh, just sticking there, a little heads up. Okay. Now, I'm going to clean off my palette knife and I want to create kind of a water-like thing here. So I'm going to get a little bit of my blue and I'm just going to put that here. Like that. And then, I'm actually thinking maybe, um, maybe what I'll do is uh, do that as the background going all the way up. Oops, then we sit still. And uh, I can do a mixture of my colors. 
that's using you know, all the colors which is really quite beautiful when you mix them up like that and I have to tell you also that uh, painting on um, painting on texture is really nice with a palette knife. I mean, it's it's really a beautiful thing. So uh, when you do, when you experience this, you'll see that it's just it goes the way it goes on, and the way it looks, and the way um, it it just creates a mood. That it's just really nice. And I want to show you also to give you an idea of how I'm applying it. I'm, I've got the knife here, and I'm applying it like butter on bread. Like that. Like that. And like that. And then I can scrape it. I can go in different directions. And it's, it's, it's not hard. So just relax with it and um, don't be afraid to use color definitely whoop, definitely you want to be um, using the color and um, just kind of letting the paint make a beautiful picture um, it's, it's kind of hard to explain unless you're experiencing it, but you can see this in only a few minutes, basically, the beauty of that. Isn't it so pretty? It's just so beautiful. So, um, and, and you can do this. You most definitely can do this. Um, uh, this is not rocket science. So, I'm just going to do a little bit more to get the sky looking the way I want it to. And it's really quite pretty. So now what I want to do is I want to uh, get back to the forest here. Um, and, uh, you know, just finish that up. So, I've got my paint here. I'm going to probably go up a little bit just to um, you know kind of give people a bit clue that this is a forest I'm working on here like that a little bit of white just stick it in there maybe in the lower area here I'll maybe make that a little bit darker um, blue in here and just uh, make that more dark, you know, since it's down in the forest. So, uh, and then a little bit more white. And so I basically got that, the forest and the sky and everything the way I want it. Now, I want to add a moon. Uh, in the sky. So I'm going to just clean off my palette knife a little bit and I'm going to uh, take a little bit of the white and moons are, they can be difficult. Um, so, you know, it may take a minute to get the moon the way I want, but um, the best thing to do is just be patient. So, um, I'm just going uh, to use the palette knife very gently. Um, you could do the palette knife, uh, you could do the moon with a brush. But the only problem with using a brush is that uh, as you can see, this moon, the way I'm doing it, it has 
texture. And the whole painting is about a lot of texture. So if I use a brush, it's not going to have, you know, the model little bits of color in it that, you know, I can create that with, with, uh, the, uh, with the palette knife and kind of keep the moon part of the scene and have that same texture in the moon and consistent with all the uh, other stuff on the uh, on the piece. So uh, I hope you can see that okay. So now I've got the moon basically where I want it and now I want to create a little reflection of the moon here on the water. This is very simple to do, but it takes a very light touch and so I'm just going to pick up a little bit of color here. I got some of the white some of the teal, I've got kind of a mixture of pink colors on my palette knife. And I don't want the painting to move around when I do this. I want it to hold still, so I'm going to hold it here with my fingers. And then I'm just going to go like this. That's it. Maybe a little bit more. Up here, a little wider. But very subdued. You can see clearly it's straight down from the moon. This is very dark in here would be the water. And I just basically went over it with a mixture of the three colors. Uh, predominantly white and then just did a little zigzag. And it's very very simple, subdued, and um, effective. So that is, you know, to me, when I see something like this, I think to myself, my God, this is such a beautiful piece. Um, and it really is not hard to achieve. You saw how I did it. You saw the steps. Um, you saw the paint I used, you saw how I applied the paints, you saw how I did the texture. It was all here on this video. This is the truth. And to be honest with you, the truth will set you free. You need to try this. Don't be afraid to try it. You'll make a beautiful painting. And uh, hopefully you'll send me a picture of it. Um, please give the video a like, share it with your friends and family, show them, let them know that they can do this sort of thing, and, um, leave me a comment. If you have questions, uh, you can leave them in the comment section, but you also can email me. My email address is in the about section on my channel page at the J Forger or J Forger. Um, you also can follow me on Facebook and see my art there. I post there regularly. I'll put a link for that on in the video description down below the video. There also down there will be a link to my Etsy shop where this painting will be available as an art print. Um, and it will be available by the time this video is published. Uh, so uh, it, it's, a, it's just an inexpensive way to for people that own my art, and uh, so I do sell prints of my art. And they're, they're really very nice, um, done on metallic paper, and it's amazing, you really have to see it to believe it. It's a beautiful glass-like uh, uh, photo paper, and it has a lot of depth, and it's just really wonderful uh, to see it in person. And the prints start at $16.50, so $16.50, so it's not unobtainable. It's very easy to own my art. So, um, yeah. And, uh, all the colors, everything that we did, 
um, will be in the video description in the tool and supply list below the, uh, down below the video. Um, please give it a try. I think you can do this. I really do. And uh, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a great night.